We just got back from our swarm call and we successfully got the swarm and everybody into the box. We closed it up and now we're just going to wait until dusk when the bees all go into the box and nobody's out flying around homeless and I'm going to collect the box, bring it back and put it into my new hive. <laughs> And what that means for me is the hive that got attacked by the bear, if there's no sign of the queen, there's no brood, there's no larva, no eggs, anything in the next 10 days to two weeks, then I'll know that the queen is no longer in the house. So what I'll do is hopefully by then, the new hive, the swarm, will have built out some comb. I can take half of that hive in the comb move it over into the attacked hive and order a new queen from a breeder in California, requeen that hive, and out of one swarm, I get two complete hives. So that's worst case scenario, which is pretty good. Best case scenario is in 10 days, I'll see larva and signs of babies, which tell me that the queen um, survived the bear attack. So that's what's going on. But right now, Glenn is going to electrify the hive. So we're gonna run a couple um, electric wires around, cover them with peanut butter. If the bear comes back tonight, sniffs the wire, gets a shock, and hopefully associates this with pain and not deliciousness. But well, that's the plan. Okay, pound away. What's the selection? Well, I don't see anything to put the to put the wire on. This is where I get into trouble. Big trouble. Look at you guys, a whole pig pile, baby tuck. One year I bought all of them and brought them all home. Look at them. Oh, those babies are so Do you want the bee jacket or do you yeah, want to mess with me? No, that's no? too hot for the bee jacket. Do you want a white shirt? Um, no, that's okay. So the new hive, the one that is going to house the swarm, I just set up. I've put two medium supers together to form the brood box. And then I put an empty super on the top and that's just temporary. The reason being is I have a box full of bees and there's only about you know a quarter of an inch between the lid and the top of the frames and you can't get eight pounds of bees to just get smooshed into there so <laughs> I'm going to take the box with the swarm invert it swap them into the hive and leave the box on the top of this empty super to form the lid for tonight in the morning, the bees hopefully will <laughs> climb down into the hive, into the frames, and I'll be able to take that empty super off, or not, and uh, put the lid on. So that's the plan. Should be um, up and hot and covered with peanut butter by nightfall. It just came out today to look at the bees. They've been here, what, this is their third day, and they're doing fantastic. They have drawn comb in their top box, which I didn't even go down and look at the brood. I'm going to give them a few more days. Interestingly enough, the hive um, that had been attacked, the hive next door, doesn't have a single bee. So I don't know, it's impossible to say whether or not they moved over into this other hive or they flew away, but no more bees there. So hopefully 
I'll get myself back on the swarm lists and um, I'll be able to go collect another swarm and fill that hive so that I have two strong hives. I will keep you posted. Hopefully this electric shock fence will um, do it. We went ahead and smeared all the wires with peanut butter so little Pooh comes back to get some bees. He will um, get a little jolt to the nose. Although a friend of ours said, yeah, he goes in and he eats a bunch of bees and gets 50,000 stings to the nose. He's not going to be deterred by electric fence. But they seem to work in Alaska and where they have like grizzlies, like big bears. So hopefully they'll work for our little northwest black bears cruising around. Thank you and I'll see you next time.